right, so um, guys, thank you so much for being here. Um, I really appreciate you guys taking your um, late afternoon on, your evening and coming, being here and talking about resume. Um, so welcome to the resume workshop. Um, this is a great quote that we have. The challenge of our life I have found it is to build a resume that doesn't simply tell a story about what you want to be, but it's the story about, about who you want to be. It's by Oprah Winfrey. So, um, you know, resume, uh, it's something that it's going to always be there and it's going to be part of your life. And, you know, just like how Oprah said, it's your story. Um, so it's like, what story do you want to tell on your resume? What professional story um, do you want to tell on it? So, so uh, we're first going to start with the basic process, employee process. Um, I know that I'm recording, so I really can see some of you students, but um, if you know the answer to this, please unmute yourself and let me know. Um, can anybody tell me how many application does an um, HR and employer receive from um, just one job posting? You can mute yourself. Anyone wanna take a guess? Mm, I would say on the mm. average 50. I know when we post a job, we get so many applications that fit and don't fit. It doesn't matter. People just looking for jobs. Thank you. A hundred. A hundred. Okay. All right. So yeah, you um and Pamela, your guys are around there. Um, you know, it could be from 200. It all depends on the job that you're applying for and how big the company is. So, but they definitely receive a lot of application. Uh, so from those applicants, how many um, do you think that they actually view? Oh, not how many, I'm sorry. How long do they actually view your resume for? Anybody Six seconds. Yeah. Six seconds. Yeah, so, um, you know, th thank you, Jasmine, for that. It does say six to eight seconds for them to review your resume. That's how usually when, um, you know, especially for students, when you are just applying to an entry level jobs, we do tell them to keep it one page just for um, the amount of time that they actually take um, to view it. And even before this, um, even before it gets to a human, um, your application at times, depending, well, roughly to 95% of the um, companies that are out there, they use an ATA, um, ATS system, which is an applicant uh, tracking system. And even before it gets to a human, it has to pass that. So if the ATS um, system, it's not finding you a, a good fit for the job, which a lot of unqualified, which a lot of qualifying candidates um, actually get, um, a lot of qualifying candidates don't get the job because of the ATA system, because of the way that they either did their resume or it's not reading the resume correctly. Um, continue with that, how many interview or people do you actually think they called from the 200 resume or plus that they received? Anyone wanna take a guess? 25. 25, okay, anybody else? It's a lot of people. <laughs> 10. Uh, six 10. people. Time. Yeah, um, so uh, thank you. Uh, I believe it's Jasmine. So yeah, so at times they might call five candidate back just for one jobs. Um, of course, this number could change. And once again, depending on how many positions they have available or how big the company is. But uh, from just one job, it's, it will be just like five candidates. Now, what does this tell you about resume, right? You want to think like, wow, you know, like how can I make myself um, be a qualifying candidate for them to actually pick me and call me for a job interview? And, you know, you also want to think like, what's the purpose of a resume? So, you know, one of the purpose of your resume is uh, to, uh, like I said, once again, tell your story, tell your professional story, um, tell where, you know, what are your goals? What, what your goals are? What have you have accomplished? What skills you have? Um, and you know, it, it also tells the type of person that you are. Um, by let's say if you have any volunteering works that you have there, it's showing that to the employees, like, hey, you know, this person actually have done work for free. Um, you know, it, it shows what kind of person you are. So, um, you know, doing uh, resume, it's not fun or easy, but it's something that you definitely have to invest in. And of course your resume, it's gonna change over time. And you always, before sending your resume out to anyone, you always wanna look at it and check it because thing changes. Um, and even sometimes with your job, that the type of tasks that you have done in your job can change. 
So from our perspective, um, you know, a resume, the, um, the resume, the advice article are on realistic expectation. Uh, what we mean by that is that they want your resume, especially the job description to align with the job description for what you're applying for. Um, employers, like I was saying, are using applicant tracking system, um, like computers are reading your resume before it even gets to an employer. So at times, um, these resume templates that you find online, um, most of the times the computers don't read it because of the way it aligns. Um, so you have to be careful of that. You want to keep it to a work document. And our advice to you is to have a master resume. So a master resume um, basically is a resume with all your like history that you have done, all your jobs, um, your volunteering, um, your schooling, all that into just, just one resume. And then uh, for that, from that resume, you're able to pick little stuff, especially for depending what kind of job you're applying for. So let's say you had like retail jobs before, and now you're going for a job into the medical field. So you could like just pick something from, uh, from that resume that's going to align with the job that you're applying for. We want to say to have the 80 to 20 uh, percent rules. So 80 percent is of consistent information, just like your name, your address, your education. Those are information that are always consistent, that are over there. And then the 20 percent is uh, modified based on in, um, industry. So you want to modify your resume based on what you're applying for. So um, let's say, let's say if you're applying for medical assistant, you want to change your skills. That's where you would change your information in your skills. You look at the job and look at that description, see what kind of um, qualification they're asking for, and then you will modify your resume um, according to that. And um, like I said, so you want to have two resumes. So have one resume that um, it's that can go out to multiple industries. Um, you know, for you guys uh, being college students, you want to have one resume that if you just want a job like to work at um, either retail or work in a fast food place or like a restaurant, uh, you will have that resume, which uh, resume which go with um, any industry. But then you want to have the other resume that it has enough experience and um, skills that are transferable that it's towards like your career that you're heading to. Does anybody have any questions? You can't unmute yourself if you wanna ask me a question. Or you could write it in the chat and we could um, answer it later. All right. So um, there is definitely no right way to create a resume. Um, I could tell you, okay, you know, this is how you do it. And, you know, you could find somebody else. Oh, well, this is how you create a resume. Um, as long as you have the information that's all that you need for your resume, that's all that matter. So I'm just gonna um, ask, we usually over here is will be a little activity. Um, so I'll just go over it and um, let you guys know if you have any questions, like I said, please unmute yourself. So can your resume go onto two pages if you have a lot to write? So the answer is um, no. Your resume should not go into two pages, um, especially if you are going for entry level jobs. Now, once if you have uh, many experience in a specific job field and you're going for that job field, then yeah, you could have multiple pages. But if you are going for entry level job, try to keep it to one page. Should your resume be 100% honest? Uh, definitely, yes. Um, you should keep it all honest in your resume. Um, if you have a skills that you don't qualify for, don't put it in. You don't want to be stuck in a situation where you do write something and then they're, you know, once you're in the job, they're like, oh, you qualify for this and you don't know what you want to do. Uh, you don't know that you could do that. So just try to be 100% honest. Uh, should your resume include your full ad uh, street address? Um, Try not to. Uh, the reason why we say no to this now, it's because everything's done electronically. So you want to just uh, remove the um, number and just keep the city and stay and even zip code. Should your resume change depending on what job you're applying to? Um, this is definitely a yes. Like I said, every job is different. Every job asks for a different skill set. So you definitely want to uh, align that 20% of your resume um, to the job that you're applying to. Should your resume be in reverse chronological order? So uh, for those who don't know, reverse chronological order will be from your uh, most recent job to the latest job. And it should be. Should your resume include your high school diploma? 
Uh, this one could be really tricky because uh, to me, like if you just recently graduated from high school, like if you just graduated from high school this summer, I will keep it until you complete your um, full year or full semester at um, HCCC. But if you have been at HCCC for a while now, please remove your high school diploma. It doesn't need to be there. Um, should your resume include a headshot or photo of yourself? Um, not unless you're going for modeling or actor, but no, it should not include. I know that um, there's um, in other countries that part of the resume is to have your headshot, but in America, um, we try to keep remove that from the resume. Should your resume include your volunteer work? Yes, any work that you have done, please put on your resume, whether it's internship or volunteer, it should definitely be there. Should your resume include your social security and birthday? Uh, no, please. Uh, one, it could be identity theft. And two, uh, people could be biased, you know, by looking at your age, it could cause ageism, and they might not want to hire you because of that. So try to avoid, oh, just remove that, should not be on your resume at all. And is your resume going to be awesome? Yes, it is. Um, so does anybody have any questions about this? Okay, moving on then. So now we're just gonna um, talk about resume section. Um, so resume section, you wanna make sure that um, everything is sort of organized. Now, um, the way we did this, like I said, every resume, um, everybody does a resume differently. So the way we do our section is for students, um, you know, college student coming in that are going into entry level jobs. Now your resume could look different depending on your experience, but this is just, for um, the way we kept our section. So you first wanna start with your heading. Um, you you know, wanna put your name, um, make sure that you have your location, which is city, street, I mean, city, um, state, and zip code, um, your phone number, and make sure that you have your emails. Now with your emails, make sure that you have a professional email. Um, don't have anything that you probably used in high school. Uh, you want to keep it professional. If you don't have, um, if you still have that old email, just make sure that you just um, create another email. It's pretty, it's, you know, it's free. So make sure your email is professional. So throughout the section, you, we're going to see a bell, um, the, resume, the resume being built. All right. So the next section will be education. Now, once again, how I was saying, um, you know, to other people, their resume, um, the education would be on the bottom and the education may be on top. It all depends to you how you want to tell your story. Um, but we do recommend for students who are attending um, ECCC or, you know, who are getting an education to have their education first, because that's right now, that's your professional, um, that's why you're doing professionally right now at the moment. So when it comes to education, make sure that you have the section heading, make sure you have the school that you go to, the location where it is, um, make sure that you have the degree. Um, if you're, um, we, you know, because of the applicant, applicant tracking system, we try to tell students um, to not abbreviate. If you're able to write in associate of science altogether, that will be great. Uh, just because of the way the applicant uh, system can read your resume could get a little confusing. Um, and make sure that you put expected graduation and when you're expected to graduate. Now, this could always change. Like I said, that's why you always have to update your resume every time you're going to um, email it to a, um, a job. And um, so uh, for other information would be uh, you include if you have a minor, uh, relevant coursework. Uh, relevant coursework, you usually will add this if, uh, for example, you... You know, you're working towards uh, a certain degree and you don't have a lot of, um, and you want to apply to a job or internship, but you don't have a lot of experience within that um, industry, then you add your relevant coursework, just letting them know like, oh, hey, you know, I have taken these classes before. Uh, you want to include your GPA. Now your GPA, I only say to include it if you're going for like an internship job or even if like if they ask you, but um, if you're going for a regular job, uh, they really don't look at your GPA. So um, you don't need to include it in your resume. Uh, you could include any awards and honors, um, any accomplishment to as well. So this is how it will look um, once you put it in your resume. Any questions about the education that anybody has? 
No? Okay. So I'll continue on. Um, so the next section would be your experience. So this is, I'm sorry, yes. Sorry, I'll ask the question. Um, can, for education purposes, is it, do you think it would be accurate to have your high school and also um, your associate's degree on there? Or should it be the recent one? Because I feel like that's a confusion that a lot of students do. I wouldn't have my high school, especially if you already have an associate degree. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, you can have your associate degree there um, and you know you could have it there, but once like you receive your bachelor, uh, you could always remove your associate degree if anything. Now, depending, um, I, I learned this, like, let's say if you want to get a job within that, um, like higher education um, and you went to that school, especially at community college, you can keep, um, you, you put um, at your associate degree just so you could show that you went to that school. But other than that, like once you receive your bachelor, really, you could just keep that there. Um, so going to experience. So your experience, um, it's your past and present um, professional story. So this is where you definitely want to um, show yourself and, you know, uh, talk about your accomplishment that you have gained in your in the workplace. So, um, you know, we start with, um, let's say if you've done volunteering, so you will put the heading, um, you put the name of the organization where you volunteer, uh, the same thing, the location and the dates when you volunteer. Now for work experience, the same thing, you had a heading, you could either put work experience, you could have experience or professional experience, whichever they all mean the same thing. As long as you have experience, because once again, going to the applicant tracking system, if you send your resume out and you have done like an internship or volunteering work and you're really proud of it and you wanted to add that and you don't put the word experience next to it, the applicant tracking system will not read that as like a job that you have done. So you always wanna make sure of that. Um, so you wanna put the, your position, um, the name of the organization, the location and um, the date. And then you want to sort of, you know, add um, when you're writing your like job description or what you have accomplished as a job or done, you want to include some numbers in there so they be able to um, to see what you have done at your job and um, how you contribute to the job as well. Now, um, this is why I mean reverse chronological order. You want to start with um, the um, your most recent job that you're in to the latest job that where you worked at. You also want to have at least like three to five bullet points, um, especially if you have like many jobs, you want to condense. You want to lead with verbs. So this is very important. You want to, um, you could always Google like leading verbs like for job and you'll get like a, a, um, a list of verbs. And also to, um, I, before that, I want to say, make sure that you're using past and past, um, past tense and present tense. I do get a lot of students that no longer work there and um, they still have uh, present tense. So that's always something, you never know who's gonna be reading your resumes. Uh, so let's talk about like accomplishment statements. So sort of how to write um, your job descriptions um, or you know the accomplishment that you have gained at work. So we like to use something called action result statements. So the action, it's you know what you did at work, like your intervention that show your skills, and the result is that impact of that behavior. So this is like an example. Let's say uh, you work at a medical office, you put maintain medical records, technical uh, technical technical library or corresponding um, files. So I, you know, I seen this on resume, just something just very simple, a list of things to be done. So now you could ask yourself, like, what did you do? You know, how you did it? How much, how many times, how often? And what was the impact? So changing it back, you could put initiate a new filing system for 3000 patients using last names and dates of birth, which resulted in more efficient, efficient record keeping, expediting file retrieval and lower wait time. So what did you do? You initiate a new file system and this is how you're doing using last name and date of birth. And then how uh, for how many patients for 300 plus patient and then what was the impact resulting in more efficient record. So if you could think of uh, things at work because sometimes like we get, you know, when we're writing a task we completely forget what we do at work we're like I don't know what I did. Um, and it's, you know, completely, even myself, like, oh, you know, I, I this is what I did. But um, it's always like a good trick that I learned is if you actually sit down and write down 
what you did from the beginning that you enter at work to when you leave at work. And then you'll see like so many different things that you actually do and like skills that you haven't even put on your resume. So um, that's just a little trick if you get stuck when writing um, the job description or your accomplishment at work. So um, this is how it will look. Um, anybody has any question before I go to the skill section? Can you just go back? I just want to take a picture, I'm sorry. Oh yeah. Um, if anything, this is being it's being recorded, so um, you'll be able to see it. But this is how it will look. Thank you. No problem. All right. I just learned that trick on how to go back. I was like, wait, how do you go back? Sorry. <laughs> All right, um, so the next section would be like your skills section. So uh, your skills, you we always try to tell students to, uh, you know, sort of go with your technical skills um, before you add any like soft skills because soft skills are any skills such as like leadership, communication, those are soft skills, but you can, you know, those skills you acquire them while you work. So you can write those like how you took a leadership, an initial leadership um, at a job description instead of writing as a skills. So with skills, you always want to start with your language, whether you're bilingual, trilingual, um, you want to list all the language and you want to um, put if you're fluent, um, how fluent you are in a, either your basic, intermediate and proficient. Now, this is very important because um, at times, especially like um, to students who speak Spanish, they may just they may just know the basic. They may not know, you know, how to write or how to read. So um, you definitely want to let the job, like the employer know um, how influenced you are within those language. And now uh, with computer and software, um, so the first side would be like something that is just general. And then if you want to get more specific about you actually write um, what type of programs you know. So like spreadsheets would be Excel, accounting software, QuickBook. Digital, instead of putting digital marketing, what sort of digital marketing, you know, Canvas, um, computer programming, you can know the C++, um, IT troubleshoot, uh, diagnosis, graphic, Adobe Photoshop, data analysis, SPSS, and so on. So um, if you know it specifically, you will write that down. And also too, with the skills, we always say, um, you wanna look at the job and see what qualification they're asking for, the job description and what skills. So like, if you see like Microsoft Office shows up a lot, make sure that, you know, that one, that you're good at that skills and that you write that skills in your resume. Um, you also, I always tell students as well with Microsoft Office, um, there's so many different things in Microsoft Office. So if you actually know how to do a little bit of each, then you could write Microsoft Office. But if you only know Word and PowerPoint, then I would just keep it more simple like that. Any question about skills? Okay, moving on. So then this is like the skill section would look like. So then, um, so the next would be that you will put either your certification or licenses. Um, so this mostly will go out to um, any students that have any certifications or licenses where there is CPR or um, you have a license in, um, in security. So you wanna make sure that you include the titles of the license, um, the certification number, the license organization, city and state and the day it was issued. Um, and, or expiration date. So if it's expired, especially with CPR, um, I would just remove that. You don't want to add that there. Uh, but this is how you will put your um, license and certification on them. Now, um, this section, um, it's the leadership section. Uh, we usually uh, keep this section for because most students they are you know involved in many things especially when the school with the clubs um, if you're not in clubs we do suggest to join clubs I know now it's a little bit you know different because of you know COVID and staying at home but just being a part of clubs has so many benefit um, you're able to um, meet other students um, build your network when you transfer to another four-year school this looks really good in your application they like to know that students are being part of the community and being part of the school and giving back so um, you know when everything goes back to normal I guess or some sort of normalcy if you're able still here and 
you know, and want to be a part of club, or even when you transfer to a four-year school, um, take advantage of that because you never know, like this will definitely benefit you once you either leave school. Um, so we always emphasize on this being part of a club. Um, so if you do are I, now, I know <laughs> I have a lot of students that they, they are part of many clubs. So uh, that's why we choose for them to have a little section for it. So part of um, clubs, you could either put club organization or leadership, um, you add the club name um, or any honor society that you're part of. Um, this would be any student government, case competition, any project that you have done in the school, if you're part of committees or um, any scholarship that you have gained. Um, in the way you will write it down, you will write down the name of engagement, the role, um, your role and the date. So it will look something like this. And if you're part of any project that you felt that you were really proud of, that you want something, then you will add it like this and you will add some information about it, um, like a little bit paragraph of it. Um, if you were, like as you can see here, if you're part of um, the federal Kappa member, because I know they do a lot of volunteering, um, you could put a little things so of things that you were part of. Um, I know they do like if you help clean the Liberty State Park or any food pantry, you put that there as well too. Um, so this, there's two parts. So let's say if you are part of many clubs, you will do a, a little section of it. But if you only were a part of one thing, you will write it under your education. Um, as well as here, um, you write like the STEM club member and the FEDA cup, uh, FEDA, FEDA cup member. Any questions about that? No, All right. so moving on. So then will be awards and honors. Um, so awards and honors includes anything that's a scholarship, um, a dean list, uh, your GPA, like if your GPA is above 3.5, any awards if you have won in it or any fellowship that you have um, done. So um, it will simply look like this um, under education. Um, when you include your award, you wanna um, write the name, once again, the name of the engagement, um, the role and the date. So if you're part of the American Needs You, this is how like how you would write it underneath. With that's that's um, a fellowship. And that's something if you're part of EOF and you still um, haven't learned about American Needs You, you will definitely learn through it. So this is how um, it will look on your resume. Any questions so far before I go to the format? Anybody has any anything to ask? No. So uh, moving on to format. So you may ask, like, why is format? Uh, yeah. Aisha. I have a question. Yes. Yes. Um, my question is, you said the GPA, um, if you have 3.5, so does that mean that if you don't have 3.5 GPA, you can include it? Well, like I said, it depends what you're applying for. So if you're applying for an internship and sometimes it, with the internship, when they ask, they're going to ask you to have a certain GPA. Um, most likely okay. at time it's either 3.0 or a 3.5 or higher. Um, so, like I said, if you're not if you're not applying for a GPA or if you don't um, if you're not applying for a school, because sometimes a school will ask you for your resume, you don't need to include your GPA. And the and the reason why I said a distinction GPA when you're writing it that that's like for any awards. So a distinction GPA is usually anything higher than three point five. Okay, thank you. No problem. Thank you. Any other questions anyone has? So um, format, so formatting is really, really important. And um, you know, you may think like, oh, why, why is formatting is important now? Well, it is, uh, especially like I said, you don't know who you're sending your resume out there. And someone could be very OCD about the way they like to look at the resume. And if they see something that's just, it's not matching or everything is all over the place, that could displace you even if you're a qualifying candidate. So um, it is important. This is, you know, part of the reason why we speak about it on the resume. So for the formatting, um, you want to be aware of your styles and uh, your style and margin. So uh, you always want to be one thing that would say be consistent. Um, I know a lot of students, especially like with some of the resume that you find online, they're very colorful and very pretty. But if you could please try to avoid those resume and just keep it simple, keep it just black. Um, just because you don't want to, you, you don't want to be distracted for some uh, from your resume from the very important things that you have on your resume. 
Um, so with the font, um, we want to have something that's very simple and easy to read. Uh, it's usually the same ones like Times New Roman, Ariel, Calibri, and Bordana. Um, you don't want to have anything scripted at all on your um, resume. Um, that's not, um, you're not able to read those. You want to sort of have like three sizes, 11, uh, 12. Um, I know they put 14, but I feel like 14 is a little bit too much, maybe 13. Um, you don't want to have like your letter too much. Um, you want to have any typographical emphasis, um, either italic, bold, or regular. Now with typographical emphasis, um, you want to make sure once again that you're consistent. So for example, if all your locations on your resume are italic, or oh, if you write one that's just italic, you want to make sure that all your location are like italic. If you know the jobs are the um, name of the organization or name of the companies are in bold, you want to make sure that everything is bold. So it's all about like having consistency on your resume. Um, make sure that you capitalize either be sentence case, uppercase if you have to, uppercase something and capitalize each word. Now. Um, we always say also to, to be aware of like acronyms or abbreviations. So um, make sure that you actually spell out the whole word just so, um, you know, if somebody's reading it and they don't understand what this means, like it, um, if you spell it out, the whole word makes it easier instead of just having an abbreviation to it. Um, now with the margin, so with the margin, this is something that, um, you know, it's, it's sort of like a little trick. So if you have a lot on your resume and it's gonna go over two page, you can change your margin to a 0.5. And what it does, it actually expands your resume. So all that information, um, as you can see, it will just go all throughout the page instead of having too much space. Um, but if you're one that you don't have too much resume, then you just wanna keep it to the one margin, which is usually the normal size margin that um, it's have. Any questions about this? So moving on. So the file type and name. So it must be clear and professional so employers can see. Now, um, once again, you may be asked like, why is this important? Um, it truly is important because a lot of employers, uh, when they receive, when they're looking at your resume, um, they usually have to download it into your into their computer. So if you're sending a resume and you name it 2019 doc one or Chris 2020, and um, the person, the um, human, you know, whoever's in charge, like human resource or the hiring manager, um, and they're looking for your resume because they're like, wow, this is a really great candidate. It may get lost in their computer and they might not be able to see it because instead of them, you know, typing um, your first name, like Christopher Reaver, they search, you know, in their computer when they download it, it's actually Chris 2019. So you wanna make sure that um, when you do your files, uh, you name it Christopher, I'm sorry, this is an example, Christopher Reaver Resume 2019, or CR Reaver Resume. Um, I know like when I work with a student, if I see that their um, their resume, it's not, it's, you know, it says resume or something, it's not really fully titled. I always change it and when I email it to them, I make sure that uh, it has their first and last name and um, the resume at least. Uh, but this is just something, even myself, I've been guilty of it, um, sending my resume, naming it like resume one, resume two. Um, so, it, you know, it's completely understandable. But um, when I learned of this, I'm like, oh, wow, maybe that's why I didn't got, you know, they didn't get called back for certain jobs. So when I learned of this, you know, I change it. So um, just make sure that it's professional and that it has your name, like first and last name and says resume, or you can even put the year. So like that, you know, like, oh, um, I have to update my resume. Any questions about this? Well, um, we sort of came to an end. Um, does anybody have any questions about the resume? Um, anything they wanna ask? It's an open floor right now. Anything I forgot to say maybe, and somebody's like, oh, you know, you didn't talk about this. Oh. I have a question, but it's not yeah. something you forgot. Um, um, if, like, for example, if you're an EOF um, student, um, I mean, scholar, and you, let's say you're looking for work, is it possible to ask for help from you or no? Yes, I like, just, <laughs> Yeah, just remind, um, like, 
what to include and what not to include. Yes, definitely. So like I said, I work for the career service department. So we have a career service department. It's open for you guys as a resource. Please, uh, you know, you could come to me because I'm also working with Yoaf, but um, there are other people in my team as well. You could come to us. Um, we even have a career platform, a website. I'll put it in the chat when you can go log in and you're able to go um you're able to apply for jobs and internships that are there. So please use this because this is like a you know a tool that we pay for for resource for um you um for the students here. So thank you, Aisha, for asking that. Any um other have, question anybody has? Yes. Yeah, I do. Um it used to, I mean it's still sometimes in the templates where it says objective. Do you have to put an objective? Can you take off the objective? What are your feelings on the objective? <laughs> what should you be writing? Because it's it's like um, people write these really fluffy things on there, and I feel like that's not what you can do. <laughs> so, I don't know. I teach students too, high school students, and so this is something I want to take back to them. All right. So thank you for that, Pamela. That's a really great question. So we're objected. Um, Normally, for any entry level jobs, I wouldn't put an objective, especially if you're, you know, if you had job in many like different industry, I wouldn't add that. So uh, if for like any student, especially high school student, I would just, it's okay for them not to have an objective on their, um, on their resume. Now, once you become a professional and you have worked for many years in a specific field, even, even if you have been working in a specific field for many years, then you can have an objective, especially if you're going for a job, for another, like for a job within the same field, just in a different company. So you can't. But if for entry level jobs, I, I we, you know, we advise not to. Does that answer your question, Pamela? Yes, thank you. Perfect. Um, and also to something I learned, uh, once again, with the um, applicant tracking system, let's say if you don't have an objective for some reason, what it does, it'll gather all the key elements and put it there. So, um, so basically, it'll build it for you when it's uh, when it's sent to another job. But it's, it's not necessary to have, I would suggest not to have it unless you've been in a field for at least over five years in a in a certain field and you have gained many um, distinct like skills or qualities that you want to write about. Any um, other question anyone has? So you guys are just going to go and like look over your resume and make sure that um, make sure that your resume looks good when you're able to apply for jobs. Well, um, if you don't have any other question, I'm gonna. Oh, excuse me. Yes. I have a question. Yes. So, um, I've actually never written like an actual resume before. Like I said, like I'm in high school and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, is is there like a, a recommended limit? What, for example, when you're writing like your skills and stuff, like how many skills? should you write like is there a recommended number so you don't go overboard and, or like too little you write too little or you write too much is there like a number for that well for the skills you always want to keep it like i said maybe writing i would say five to seven um it really is unlimited it's, you know it's, it's up to you um you just want to make sure that one um if you're going once again if you're going for like an entry level job that you don't um that you don't so surpass like two pages, make your resume keep it to one page. And also too, since, um, you know, whatever job you're applying for, make sure that you look at the qualification or the skills that they're asking for and that your uh, resume aligned to that. Um, so you just wanna keep it, you know, five to seven at most. All right, I see, thank you. No problem, thank you, Marissa. Um, anybody else has any um, other questions that they wanna ask? Um, I have a question. Yes, Aisha. But it, it it's not um about the resume. Um, I know um I don't know if you have some students with this, but um I know graduating um at Hassan County um with your degree, I know they said it's um it's just um it's like it's not like um a certificate certificate that you can use to get a job. And I wanted to ask you about it. Like, whether you have um, students that like for example for me I'm graduating with um 
this spring with um, medical science. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, I know it's not like um, like um, a real certificate, to, but I'm wondering if you can use that to look for a job or no, until you have your bachelor's. Well, you could definitely put that on your resume because, um, you know, once you graduate, uh, obviously you are you are going to see a certification for it, right? Yes. So, yeah, so you could add that to your um, you could add that to your resume. And um, if you never had any experience within the medical science or the medical fields and you want to look for entry level jobs, what you could do is um, you could put like what sort of coursework you have done, you have taken at ACCC that you feel that's going to um, level your skill sets. So um, if you, you know, if you, like I said, you always want to look at the job description and look, see what they're looking for. And um, if you may not like had experience before, but in one of your classes, you have learned about this and you put like relevant coursework and you put it in your, um, under your education. Oh, okay. So I, I work in, I work as a nurse assistant, but I was wondering like, um, if like, if you get it, like, because it's like a science um, thing, like if you can get something like better or, you know, but thank you. I, I get it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, it depends what, what, like, what's your goal then? What's your end goal after you either receive um, the certification from here, or if you're going to go to a four-year college and complete a bachelor, like what is it, um, you know, that you want to do with it? So it all depends yes. on to you. I'm definitely going for my bachelor's, but I was just saying like for the meantime, while you are in school, like what can you do with it? Like You could look for entry level positions and, you know, in places where they are requiring, um, you know, they're either requiring somebody within like the medical field or even like in um, in doctor's office if they're looking for medical assistance. I would, um, I, what I'm gonna do Aisha, I'll send you, um, well, I guess I'll put it here too as well for everyone just to go into our, um, like I was saying, going to our career platform um, and like that you'll be able to view cause especially within nursing, we have like many jobs opening in nursing. So um, I do advise um, all the students to sign in all you need to do when you're signing in is just your ACC email and your um, password and you log in and your, uh, of course you would create a profile, but you're gonna learn um, there you'll be able to search for jobs and um, any internships that we have available. I just put it in the chat so you guys could um, go up to it. Any other questions anyone has? Hi, yes. Um, where do we see the recording? Like if I wanna refer back? Okay, so um, we are in the kitchen. I have you like in a weird spot. I just noticed. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> um, so it's gonna be uploaded on a, our YouTube channel for on the EOF YouTube channel, okay. and also too, um, we do have a career channel as well. Um, I will I will email it um and send it to you so you'll be able to see it. Okay. Okay. I'm just like off 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 <laughs> of all of this. And like I mentioned, I do talk to my, my students, my high school students. I don't have them in person right now. So some of the things we do are really loose. Um, but in the future, just like even the EOF program in itself, they don't know about it. Like, And um, I just wanted to know if there was a way like we could pull you into like high school, like the senior year, introduce EOF, because most of my students will go into Hudson Community. And they kind of fall off because they don't know what they're doing. They have no guidance. Like it just gets really tricky for them. They're very used to being guided. Uh, I, <laughs> I have, um, you know, and then, so by the time I figure out like, why did you leave school or why did you drop the semester and tell them, oh, you could have done this. They're like, oh, I didn't know. No one told me. They're, they're kind of like aimless for a while. And I get that. So I just kind of wanted to thread the two just to see like if maybe, if I get them to like a system where they're already knowing that they can go to support, it's sooner than later for them. Um, I would suggest to reach out to Mr. Lowe about it and let mm -hmm. him know exactly, let him know like, you know, um, what core are you working with? Like, are they about to be, are they about to graduate and going to, um, and going to um, school like college or are they still like juniors or seniors? I have everything. I have kids that are currently in HCC. Oh. They had no idea what EOF was. 
us and now I'm figuring it out um, so I can give them information. And then I have kids that are graduating this year that are definitely going to like benefit from that program because it's a lot of the stuff we already do in the high school for them. Mm-hmm. Um, I brought a parent linking program. So my kids are, are teen parents. And that's why I mean, they're very used to being helped along the way because we become their only like little hub where they can kind of come into and ask all kinds of questions and get things like kind of helped with settling things out because they're on their own. Um, so, but the same thing goes for college. That's what college experience is. It's, it's very, you know, fast and it's uncomfortable and it's a lot of stuff at the same time. And you kind of just at the end of your ride, figure things out normally. But for them, it's just a little bit trickier because they are dealing with kid at home and all of this stuff. So I just feel like if I can get you guys into like knowing what this is ahead of time, you won't go in with such a fear, you know? So that's what I meant. Turn my camera on for that. Um, so Pamela, you could definitely email me because um, that's one of the ideas I was actually going to bring um, to Mr. Lowe because we do need to support more of our scholars, especially the ones that are just finishing high school. Um, mm. Because as a... At, as me, myself, I did not know anything about EOF, which is why I'm not EOF. Um, I just work for a wonderful program, which I benefit from in different ways. So yeah, shoot me an email um, and we can discuss further. Oh, what school do you work for currently? Union City High School. Oh, Union City. I went to Memorial. So okay. I definitely know like the type of population you're working with. Mm-hmm. That'd be great. So, thank you. No, thank you. And I just... I want to add to what um, Pamela said, because I've been in Hudson County for so many years. I know it's only two years, but I've been there for so many years. And I'm graduating this spring, and I just heard about uh, you. My my um, classmate um, just graduated this December, and she was, we were talking, and she said, oh, um, are you part of EOF? I said, what is EOF? And she said, you've been there for so many years, and then you graduate, and you don't even know what it is. So... I agree with what she's saying. Um, I never knew, I never heard of it until the spring. And at least I can continue with um, 